Hello, my front porch friend. Well, today the weather was not quite agreeable with a walk in the woods. So, I just wanted to find us a place that you and I could come and talk for just a little while in the quiet. Just us. So, I decided to do something a bit different. I decided to come downtown right here in Hamilton, Alabama, to the coffee shop that is owned by The Ramp, our ministries. The coffee shop, you will know what this means. It is called The Mill House. Of course, after The Mill House in the valley where you and I usually meet. In fact, let me show you this over here in case you haven't seen it. Some of you may have already seen it. But this coffee shop that we have has this beautiful mural that was painted. We had painted on this wall. Do you recognize where that place is? Yes, that is where we usually are. It is right there in the valley. There's the creek and the dam that you and I often, there's the mill house that most of the time you and I are often in. Of course, you see that old red barn a lot, don't you? And of course, my house is not quite on the picture, <laughs> but it is over there. And the old dirt road that you and I usually are walking on is way back up in there. So anyway, thank you for sharing that with me. When you come to Hamilton someday, to the ramp or to a Front Porch Friends Conference, which you should do, you'll have to come by the coffee shop. But today, I decided to come after hours when it was all closed. So we are in here all by ourselves because normally it's just full of students and people and noise and the uh, espresso machine you know, making coffee and but today it's just us. So I have a spot for us right over here, picked out just for you and me. And I personally am loving the quiet. So come, have a seat. I wish you were here and I'd fix you some coffee. But if you'll let me, I'm gonna go ahead and drink mine, all right? I want to talk to you because before I turn this camera on I was walking in this room just leaning in to hear what the Lord wanted to say and I literally felt like you had just walked in this door and just sat down right here in this seat and just begin to talk and I could hear what the Lord was telling me as I was asking him, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? What is your word for what they're dealing with right now? And I heard this word, and it is so significant for you that I want you to hear it. it, it I know in all of its simplicity, I want you to hear it the way that I hear it for you. And here's what God said for me to tell you. He said, Tell her or him that I see you. Tell her I see her. Tell him I've seen him. Tell her I've heard her prayer. I have heard you. That's how I heard it. I heard the Lord say it like this. Tell her I see you. I hear you. And, you know, like I said, as simple as that is, when you're going through certain places in your life, that's just enough. And with you sitting right here at this booth with me, if I were literally listening to you tell me what you're dealing with, that's what I would want to tell you. That's enough that he sees, he hears, he knows. Because there was another lady that was in this place, and you probably well know her story. Her story's in the uh, 16th chapter of Genesis. Her name was Hagar. You know, Hagar is just kind of, you just sort of feel sorry for her a little bit. Because Hagar, of course, was Abraham and Sarah. She was Sarah's maid, an Egyptian maid. She uh, was put into circumstances that basically she didn't ask for. Uh, 
And of course, she became somewhat of a surrogate mother. She became the one that would carry Abraham's child when Sarah decided to take things into her own hands and try to help God out on a promise. <laughs> you know, how that usually doesn't work out too well. But you know, Hagar was in this horrible situation. She is now pregnant. She's carrying this child. Sarah gets pretty upset about her plan after it was, you know, already in the making. And the Bible says in this passage that Sarah got to treating Hagar so rough and so bad that Hagar just decides to run. And I studied this just a little bit. And it's interesting that one, one commentary said that Hagar was actually running in the direction of Egypt. It sounds like Hagar just decided, you know what? I am done. I'm over this. I'm going home. I'm, I'm getting out of here. This girl was very upset. And here's what happened to her. Listen to this carefully. The Bible says here in Genesis, the 16th chapter, and sort of in the middle of the sixth verse, I'm reading in the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, so Sarah treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. Again, the, the road to Shur was actually the road back to Egypt. The angel says to Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? Now, you know, the angel of the Lord already knew that. Hagar needed to be reminded of that. Hagar needed to ask herself, what are you running from? Where have you come from and where do you think you're going? So Hagar says, I'm running away from my mistress. The angel of the Lord tells her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. And then he says, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you're now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. And you are to call your son Ishmael, which means God hears. <laughs> God hears. And then he says this, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. Oh, sweet friend. I just hear that for you today. The Lord wants to tell you he has heard your cry of distress. Now watch what happens. I'm not finished. I'm going to skip on down because he talks about Ishmael. Verse 13. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She said, and now today, have I truly seen the one who sees me? And so she named that very place at the water after the one who sees her. Isn't that just beautiful? I love that passage because for some of you right now, you kind of feel a little bit like Hagar. Maybe you just feel like you found yourself in circumstances like Hagar, in circumstances you didn't ask for in life, circumstances you didn't expect in life. And honestly, just like her, you right now you've got more questions than answers. The world somewhat is just spinning. You're wishing you could just get off of the merry-go-round and run. Just, just sort of wishing that you could just run and keep running and run away from these circumstances. Just get away from it all which is exactly what Hagar was doing. She says, I'm running away. I'm leaving my mister. I'm getting away from these circumstances. I can't deal with this anymore. Sometimes life, it just feels like that. It is probably what she was asking herself. God, where are you? Where is God in all of this? Some of you have been asking that this week. Some of you found yourself, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand where, where are you today, God? And, and even, it was like I could hear some of you sitting down saying, saying these very things, Lord, do you even know where I am? It was, when I was recording this, thinking about this earlier, I was seeing, it's like I could see someone sitting like in a hospital waiting room, just saying, God, do you even know where I am? Some of you that's just lying in a hospital bed, 
Do you see me? Do you even hear me, God? Because right now, Lord, I'm having to ask, are these prayers even getting through at all? God, are my prayers working at all? Because at the moment, it doesn't even seem like it. Because right now, it doesn't look like it, and I cannot feel anything in my life at the moment but pain and exhaustion. And a myriad of questions. And what does God do when we have these times just like Hagar? Did he leave her at that well in the wilderness all alone when she was asking her questions and crying and running and she's laying there beside that well, even to a little girl? It's so fascinating because it was to Hagar. This is the first time in the Bible that actually an angelic visitation is even mentioned where the angel of the Lord comes to somebody. The angel of the Lord appears to someone and it's to Hagar. Why? Because God loved her. He saw what she was dealing with, just like he sees what you're dealing with right now. Is God just going to leave you in that place? Well, did he leave Hagar there with all of her questions? Is he going to leave you right now while you're driving down the road in the car listening to this? Wishing you could just keep driving and run away from it all? Is God going to leave you right now sitting at that kitchen table feeling so empty and hurt? Like you're halfway losing your mind? Is God going to leave you? Come on, is he going to abandon you? Is he going to leave you in that hospital bed or just walk away from that? What? No. No. Is God going to abandon you where you are? No. I wish I could just scream it. I probably could because there's nobody in here but us. No. Heavens, no. Do you know the truth, sweetheart? Do you know what? Heaven and earth would have to pass away if God abandoned you. Why do I say that? And I mean that literally. Heaven and earth out there right now would have to disintegrate and pass away if God were to leave you where you are right now. Why do I say that? Because God promised you he would never leave you or forsake you. And Jesus said heaven and earth will have to pass away before one of God's words fails. I'm paraphrasing that, but it's what it meant. I think heaven and earth still out there. I'm looking around right now. What does that mean? It means he is not going to fail you. I heard this scripture to read to you today, and I want you to listen to this word with all of your heart and with all of your faith. All right? This is what I heard to give you. I'm reading to you this scripture out of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the, starting with the fifth verse, and it's in the Amplified Bible, which I love the Amplified Bible. This is what this verse says. It says, be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Be content. That's what the King James calls it. Be content in whatever state you find yourself in. You say, how can I do that? Here's how. The verse continues. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not. Now, the Bible says that. I didn't just repeat that because I liked it. In the Amplified Version, the Bible, the Amplified Translation took that little phrase that's, that's written in the original Greek. It took that little phrase out. And that is the way the phrase is actually indicated. It's, it's actually the way it's meant to be. It's God repeating it. God repeating it just for emphasis. He is saying, I will never, never, never leave you. I love this one. I will not, I will not, I will will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, or relax my hold on you. Then he ends it like this, assuredly not. Oh, that is so powerful. That's just so powerful. Sweet friend, sitting across from me right now in this coffee shop. Yeah, I'll read it to you again. I sure will. Yes, I will. Here's what the Lord says to you. 
Be satisfied or content with your present circumstances. Be content with whatever you have. For he, God himself, has said to you, I will not in any way fail you, nor will I give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. That's God's promise to you right now, sitting there with all the questions and feeling empty and tired. And the Lord's telling you today, I see you, I hear you. Even when you can't feel me, even when you can't hear anything, I'm telling you today, his word to you is I will never leave you. No, no, no. He knows you're in that hospital bed. Yes. Yeah. He heard it. He heard what the doctor said. He heard what your family said this week. He has seen it. He understands what was, what was, what was encountering you this week. But you don't ever have to fear what man can do to you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord told me to tell you what people are saying right now. Do not fear what people are saying. Do not fear what the doctor has said. Do not fear what your daughter told you last night. Do not be afraid, even in the face of what your daughter told you last week. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of what it looks like your son is about to do. Do not be afraid of the, of the, of, of the situation you dealt with this week in your marriage. Don't you be afraid. No, that's never the will of your father for you to be afraid. How do I know that? Because God is with you. God is with you. And perfect love cast out all fear. And he's perfect love. And when he is with you, there's no room for fear. You don't have to be afraid what man said, what man's done. You don't ever have to be afraid. How do I know that? How do I know that God is with you? Number one, because he said so. And number two, because he told me to tell you he sees you and he hears you. Now, when God heard Hagar, he told her what to do. Not only did he tell her, I see you and I hear you. He told her what to do. He didn't just say, I, I see you and walk off. He said, Hagar, here's what to do. Go, go back. Go back. I know it's going to be hard. And you may not want to. But I just think Hagar had a change of heart. When she left and ran, she was hurt and angry. But when she knew that he was with her she could do what he was telling her to do I know for Hagar it was hard to go back but her blessing was found in her obedience she had a promise but the only way for her to walk in the fullness of that promise was for her to obey God and do the hard thing and sometimes for you sweetheart for you to walk in the promise and the fullness of it is going to be for you to do the hard thing and sometimes the hard thing is just to keep believing. Sometimes the hard thing is to just keep on when you'd rather just quit. When you'd rather throw this thing to the wind, throw hope to the wind, throw the fight to the wind and say, forget it all. I don't want to do this anymore. But your blessing and the fulfillment of that promise is going to be found in your obedience to do the hard thing. Even if the hard thing is doing nothing but just keeping on standing and believing. If you will do that, you're going to find the fulfillment of his word. He cannot fail you. He promised he would not. And you're not going to be his first one to, that he's going to fail. Never. Never. Here's what he told me to tell you. The Lord said for me to tell you, sweet friend, get up. Pick up your faith. Pick it up. I know you've been on a roller coaster ride lately, emotionally and even spiritually. But the Lord said to tell you right now, get your bearings. Get a hold of something solid. What's the solid thing? This word. 
Get a hold of something solid. Get a hold of something that's not shaking right now in your life. And everything else right now in your life is shaking. And I understand that. But you can't grab a hold of that shaking stuff or you're going to fall with it. You get a hold of something that is not shaking. Get a hold of something that is solid. Get a hold of something that is secure. And that's the Word of God. And I don't care if you're the only one holding on to it. You hold on to the promise. You hold on to the Word. If you're the only one in your family holding on, you've got to hold on. God told me to tell you, get up. Pick up your faith. Get your bearings. He told me to tell you, brush off that despair. Get that despair off you. Brush it off. Get it off. He said to tell you, dry your tears. I'm with you. It's going to be all right. I just see him like he's just bending down, picking you up. Just picking you up. And it's like he's helping you. Like his sweet daddy would do it. Dry your tears. Come on, get up. It's not that your tears don't matter. It's just that you need to see clearly. And these tears are blurring your vision. Come on. Get up. Change clothes. The Lord said to tell you, you've got to change clothes. He wants you to take off that, that old garment of heaviness. You've been wearing a garment of heaviness. Get it off of you. Come on. You've got to go change clothes. Get that off. Get it off. You're gonna have to, you've been wearing that garment for a little while now. Go change clothes. He's got something for you to wear, and he's handing it to you right now. What is it? Oh, it's pretty. It's a, it's a garment of praise. Get off that old heaviness thing for good. Come on, get over your head. I'm going to help you take it off. Come on, get it off. Put on, put on some garments of praise. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You've taken off this sackcloth of mourning. You've girded me with gladness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord said to me, to, for me to tell you, change your posture and lift your gaze. Change your posture and lift your gaze. He told me to tell you, stop believing them and start believing him. Stop believing them and start believing him. They're going to, people are going to fail. People are, their promises fail. This is the one that doesn't fail. Stop believing them and start believing him. Stop believing the doctor more than you believe this word. What did God say? What did God tell you? Pick that back up and you've got to do what he said. Do what he said, honey, sweet friend, friend to friend. Even if it's the hard thing, you remember your blessing is found in your obedience. And the hard thing may be for somebody watching this right now, maybe you've got to go back and ask for forgiveness. Go back. Ask him to forgive you. Or maybe today, you need to do the forgiving. Even before they ask for it. They may not even be close to asking you for forgiveness for hurting you. Forgive them anyway. Maybe they're not coming home this weekend like you'd hoped. You didn't get a card in the mail like you'd hoped. It's okay. It doesn't change God's promise to you one bit. Remember, your war is not with people. You're dealing with something in the spirit realm. And your father's got a victory for you. You just got to keep on. You got to keep on. Today, right now, start worshiping God. Put that garment of praise on and find your contentment in him and not in situations of this world. I want to pray for you right now. Today, I was speaking earlier this week. This week, I was speaking to our Ramp School of Ministry students. They're graduating this week. Oh. And I was sharing with them a word that's actually found at the end of the second chapter of Acts, the very last chapter. And, and it's a beautiful verse at the end of Acts 2, and it's talking about the early church. And it says this, they continued on in the apostles' doctrine and in the breaking of bread and prayer. One version says they continued steadfastly. And, and as I was sharing that word, even with our students that were graduating from our school of ministry, I thought of you, and I knew that the Lord was telling me to tell you. He sees you. He hears you. Pick yourself up and continue on. Sweetheart, now that you've brushed off the despair, shaken this junk off, get your gaze and lift your gaze. Come on, honey, do it. And he wants you to start walking and continue on.
continue on right now in the comments. I want you to start commenting so that we can all agree together and be together in this. I want you to start saying something like, he sees me. He hears me. I'll continue on. I'll continue on. And if you're needing special prayer for anything, sweetheart, please comment. For your children, you can put their names. You can put whatever you're needing. We want to pray for you. Right here, there's many, many, many women and men on this front porch. And we pray for each other. And we celebrate each other's victories. So will you tell us what you need right now in prayer? But I want you to put that. He sees me. He hears me. I'll continue on. I'll continue on. Maybe you just want to put, I'm changing clothes. <laughs> Why don't you just put that right now? I'm changing clothes. I'm getting off this garment of despair. I'm getting off this garment of heaviness. And I'm putting on a garment of praise. Father, we thank you for the glorious presence of God that is with us. That you never, ever, ever leave your children. You never forsake your sons and daughters. Father, I thank you that right now you are declaring and you are releasing strength. And you are releasing joy. New joy. Joy like they've never had in their life. Crazy joy. Joy that doesn't even make sense to their family. And people think, don't even understand why they can even be doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying with, with what they're dealing with. But Lord, I thank you that you're going to prove yourself strong again and receive great glory when this thing is over. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, there's a testimony coming. And I believe it. For you and your good and his great glory. Oh, sweet friend, I love you. Thank you for coming to the coffee shop with me. Someday I want you to come and get you a cup of coffee when it's open. Will you do that? I love you, honey. I want you to keep believing. Continue on. It's going to be all right. I'll see you next week. Till then, bye-bye.